Joining us is Liza Featherstone. She is a columnist for Jacobin and also a freelance journalist and the author of Selling Women Short, The Landmark Battle for Workers' Rights at Walmart. Liza, thank mm. you so much for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So you wrote two excellent pieces in Jacobin recently. Uh, the first is titled Elite Feminist Ran Cover for Andrew Cuomo. And the second hmm. one is Barack Obama has been one of the worst ex-presidents ever. That was a cathartic read for sure. And I have lots of <laughs> questions for you. But let's start with the uh, Cuomo piece, because you touch on something so incredibly important in regard to not just liberal feminists, but the mainstream Democrats in Congress. So, so who are these women who pride themselves uh, as fighters for women, but who actually really turned out to be enablers of Andrew Cuomo's? Oh, it is just amazing, Anna. Um, so, um, you'll you'll all rec recall um, the founding of Times Up about four years ago. Um, which um, was a group of um, Hollywood women um, who were who um, were um, came together to take on the abuses of Hollywood bosses like um, Harvey Weinstein, um, and um, and their the name of the organization Times Up um, kind of became synonymous with the Me Too movement, um, and um, and and also with the you know with and and with, especially with the sort of Hollywood side of it, um, and. Um, and and the the group has been very high profile, also very close um, to the Democratic Party. Um, so um, and and so, so there have been um, there have been a number of um, of um, scandals and semi scandals associated with that in the past. Um, but um, the but the most recent and um, probably most outrageous yet um, it was is. Um, that um, um, one of its um, founders and also the executive director um, co were consulted by Cuomo about his, um, his, his little problem with 11 women accusing him of sexual harassment um, and assault. Um, now, just like flashing forward, um, we um, now know from Attorney General Tish James's extensive report in which she interviewed more than 700 people, including, including the people who involved in the cover-up um, of, of all of this. Um, you know, so we now know from that report that these um, that these allegations were um, extremely solid, and um, and that Cuomo did, did indeed do the things he was accused of doing. Um, when so when these were um, when these accusations first surfaced, um, Cuomo um, consulted um, with these Times Up um, activists, drawing on their expertise in sexual harassment and assault as well as their credibility um, from the Me Too movement um, to um, basically ask them, how do I get out of this? Um, and, um, and, and they, they provided um, their expertise. They didn't say, you know, uh, fuck off, Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> you know, you're exactly the kind of person this organization was founded to, um, you know, eject from power and humiliate. <laughs> um, they didn't say that at all. They um, they provided the advice as asked. Um, and um, and um, they're, you know, so as as this has come to light, um, you know, people are. Um, it's it's nice to see people are pretty indignant and um and uh, a letter um there was an open letter signed by many of times up's former clients um women who um who had come to the organization for help in the past um saying you know that that this is um you know not just you know that it's hypocritical in some narrow um way um or you know that it's you know or that it's wrong to um you know side with abusers all of which is true but but correctly saying that um that the organization was so identified with and so close to power that it was unable 
to um you know to to make the make the right call to um to be on the side of the workers be on the side of um of the regular people who were suffering from from from, from these abuses at the hands of their boss um so it's really um, an interesting scandal one of the um one of the founders um already had to step down roberta kaplan um and um she gave um she 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 wrote a resignation letter that um actually has the distinction of being um worse than cuomo's resignation letter yes yes be, being even more of a failed apology yes i'm really so glad that you mentioned that because she seemed to make it seem as though she had been betrayed in her letter. Yeah. I don't, it was weird. Yeah. 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 She says, you know, sometimes shockingly, the men who we think on are on our side turn out to be abusers. It's like, um, you were the one you had access to all that information, <laughs> you know, you were, you know, and you were enabling that you're only upset now that other people know it, you know? Um, <laughs> right. It was just, and and also, and, and she, she gives us sort of a convoluted um, discussion of her conflicts of interest as a, a lawyer versus um, an advocate in the, for the organization, um, which is also quite ridiculous because the reason that Cuomo called on her at all is because of her credibility, um, you know, it, with, with time's up like you, you know he wanted to be able to say i consulted with the me too leading me to experts um and um and as and the other thing is that um that time's up has con has um consistently been defending itself by saying um well we told we told him to tell the truth and not to attack um the abuser not to not to attack the accusers um, but the thing that that defense misses is that that's good PR advice. They were providing Governor Cuomo, um, the boss, the uh, abusive boss, with PR advice. Because, you know, don't, you know, tell the truth and don't attack um, your accuser is very good PR advice. Um, and so, so for them to sort of say, well, you know, we were, um, you know, um, we were, this, we, 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 this was our advice, you know, and, you know, try to draw moral authority from that is also really, um, um, really, really disgraceful. And it will be interesting to see if more um, times up heads roll, um, because, um, because I, I don't think that she's the, um, she, she's clearly not the only person um, in the organization implicated in this um, scandal. This reminds me a lot of um, uh, legendary liberal feminist uh, Gloria Steinem, former CIA agent Gloria Steinem, yes. uh, defending Bill Clinton and attacking Monica Lewinsky um, mm -hmm. in a very famous New York Times op-ed in the late 90s. W what is What is it yeah. about liberal feminism that is it that they just kind of keep on stepping on the same rake over and over again or is there something that like or are they or are they just is there something more insidious going on what what what's what is happening there i think it's a, a real class solidarity um you know that um that you know if your politics is really based on um getting more women bosses and getting more women in power um you know that's a politics of identification um, with uh, with the ruling class. That's a politics of identification with the boss. So, you know, when it's the boss versus women, um, they're uh, they're often going to take the boss's side because it's it's a ruling class ideology as much as it's a feminist ideology. You know, in the same yeah. way that socialist feminist feminism is as much socialism as it is feminism. We're like it's both. Right. Right. You know, so that's their, you know, they're, they're the flip side of that. I, I just yeah, I really quickly, I just they, they, they Emily Blunt just announced uh, a new, her new movie with The Rock, which is about <laughs> the <laughs> the first female <laughs> Pinkerton agency. I, and I just think that that might be amazing. the that might be the most liberal feminist thing that's ever happened. I, I know. I, I, I know. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's just uh, like you, you just like. I mean, it, you you almost can't really picture the meeting in which that 
that was you know discussed yeah. it sounds like it would be like a jacobin editorial meeting where we're like wouldn't it be funny <laughs> if they did this yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. like a parody yeah yeah exactly yeah. So, you know, it, it's interesting because you see this play out over and over again, um, not only with these nonprofits that claim to champion women, but you see it play out in the context of mainstream democratic campaigning, where mm -hmm. they really position themselves as these warriors for the disenfranchised. Uh, but when it comes to policy that would genuinely improve the lives of the people they're talking about or campaigning uh, for, they don't, they never deliver. So I think a yeah. good example of that would be the uh, Senate floor vote on increasing the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that would overwhelmingly benefit women and absolutely. also women of color. And yeah, so absolutely. like, what do you think? I mean, you talked about the class element to that and I think you're absolutely right about it. Um, but I just feel like it, it goes even further. Like it's even more insulting than that because they use disenfranchised people as props. Mm -hmm. And my question is like, do you think that people are becoming more and more privy to that? Mm. Because there, there's still this like backlash when you compare the two parties and just how similar they are, people are under the assumption that there are like significant differences between the two. But my feeling is that most of those differences are rhetorical. Mm. Well, I mean, I think that there, I think that there are differences between, uh, between the two parties. Um, but you're absolutely right that, um, that on significant um, mass issues, the Democrats do very often um, completely fail to deliver on the $15 minimum wage is a great example. Um, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, it's, um, I, 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 I do think that there, ha there is, um, that there is backlash to that and, you know, and in a sort of, um, more, um, I mean, the, I think that, I think there's backlash to that in this, in the sense that, um, um, that I think there is more skepticism toward mainstream Democrats um, than there um, than there used to be. And um, on the other side of that, I think there's also um, more alternatives um, than there used to be as we see the rise of um, as, as we we see the rise of of different kinds of politicians, you know, like, um, you know, like uh, in people like Ilan Omar or um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on the national level. And then we see many, um, many, many more um, rising um, figures like that um, who, who are um, closer to being um, real working class leaders um, um, as well as being um, as well as being um, genuine champions um, against um, um, racism and sexism um, and and the um, abuses of capitalism in their own way. Um, so I, I think that I think we are sort of seeing some of that change. I mean, I think that you know five or six years ago, the um, the um, idea that um, mainstream Democrats um, were, um, the um, were the progressive um, force, and you know, and were the um, the force against you know the patriarchy and against um, white supremacy. I, I think that that was um, largely unquestioned, and I think people are are becoming a lot more skeptical of that now. If you enjoyed this clip from Jacobin Weekends, please hit like and subscribe. You can also watch the full episode or catch any future live stream by clicking the join button below and becoming a Jacobin YouTube member. Thank you.